Welcome to Nerd on Nerd with me, Ellie Kempster. And me, Liam Underwood. And in this episode, we're talking about the movie Feast from 2005. Do not get confused with the one from, I think, 2014. What's the one from 2014 like? Well, maybe better. Um, Let me read the description for you. This Oscar-winning animated short film tells the story of one man's love life as seen through the eyes of his best friend and dog, Winston, and revealed bite by bite through the meals they share. Oh man, that sounds like it would have been a better film. It's only six minutes long. Oh, we could have done it. It would have been so easy. But yeah. <sighs> but we're doing the 2005 film Feast about patrons locked inside of a bar forced to fight monsters. Yep. We'll get to that. Yeah, we will. Oh, we've got so many things to discuss about that. But we've got other things to discuss too, like catching up with Ellie and Liam. Seamless. Perfect, perfect. Uh, listeners, we are recording this episode in the same week. Is it the same week that we recorded WrestleMania? No. No, but it's it's within a week, I think. We have had a weekend, haven't we, in between? We've had one weekend, yeah, but... It's all sort of blurring together. Your Canada holidays just ruined everything. Did we record this time last week? Was it Thursday? Oh, maybe. Yeah, it was. There we go, then. That's what it so is. So we, oh. we only recorded a week ago. So we haven't actually done a whole lot. Speak for yourself. Oh, sorry. Okay, I haven't done a whole lot. Liam apparently has done stuff. Oh, he did. He did tell me before we started recording that he also hadn't done anything. But no, I I haven't done like a whole lot. But I didn't want the listeners to know that. Oh, okay. I'm so confused. Uh, so okay, so I have this reputation with the listeners as being this like pretty groovy guy. Yeah, I think so. And um, you know, I've got to kind of maintain that facade. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to be part of the shattering of that illusion it's fine i mean i've done stuff but we're not at that section yet unfortunately so i I have done a lot of things but if you're lucky i might get to talk about them later oh we'll find out oh uh yeah so what have you been up to anything other than the stuff that you're going to talk about in a bit uh yeah i went to um muchas nachos my favorite mexican place are they still open Still open, yeah. Yay. Not closed did down they get, Did your community end up saving them? Don't know. You should find out. Yeah. Well, they're still there, so, you know. Yeah, they could go any minute, mate. I know. Um, that was good. What else? I don't know. I had my first, like, personal training session today uh, for, for, like, a month. How did that go? All good? Didn't like it. You didn't or she didn't? A bit of both, I think. Fair enough. Um, you'd think, right, after a month... Where we've both been on separate holidays, that we'd be able to fill an hour with like idle chit chat. I mean, not yeah. even a solid hour, like just the bits in between the exercising. Yeah, yeah, but I would assume so. She asked me like three questions about cat specifically in that hour, and I always use that as a way of like monitoring like how well we're doing with the small talk. Okay, got explain. Well, like if we're doing good with the small talk, she doesn't need to ask about cat because she's just enjoying my lovely company. But when Got the small you. talk starts struggling, then it's like, all right, well, let's just swing this conversation onto cat, shall we? Right. And three times today. Bad. So what were you doing wrong? Let's break this down, then. What did you? What? How do? You, what do you think you messed up in this conversation? Told her about Taylor Swift. What were you? What were you saying about Taylor Swift to her? Well, she asked how it was coming back to the gym, and I told her that I blasted Taylor Swift out of my phone oh. instead of my headphones. Yeah, right. You told her that story. What did she say? She said at least it wasn't High School Musical. <laughs> that's accurate. It is. I think she, that's what I think that's what we've all said to you, isn't it? Yeah, it just goes to show how well she knows me. Yeah, that is. <laughs> she she does know you well. Yeah, obviously we spoke about our holidays. She went to India. I was like, oh, what was the food situation like? Uh, she said no deli belly. So you know, very very good. This is what I mean. Like it's just. I think yeah, it's I a little struggle bit with like, like polite pleasantries. I, I like I don't like small talk. I like big talk. But you're also from two different worlds. I think. In what way? Like, well, because like a deli belly, right? That Assumedly, that's the thing where you sort of go on holiday to somewhere like India and eat all the nice food so you get a bit of a belly, right? No. Oh. It's where like you go to somewhere like India and because the food is prepared very differently to how you're used oh, to, you it makes you really sick. Yeah. Ah, I got you. Yeah. But she was like, I just like to vegetable stuff. So I was but that's good. But like, that's like right up your alley. What is? Talking about like poo and stuff. You love that. Yeah, I know, but I'm also like, when I'm in public, I'm aware that that's probably not appropriate. But if she's bringing it up. Yeah, but I'm, I can't just be like, oh, so what's the weirdest place you shit? <laughs> no, I can ask you, you said, that. 
Liam, you should have said, that's lucky, because I didn't get any poutine poopies. What? Po- poutine. Poutine? What's that? It's a Canadian food. Is it? Yeah. What is it? Isn't it like chips and gravy? I don't know what you're talking about now. Oh my god, I'm looking it up. Poutine. It originates from Canada. Yeah. It's French fries and cheese curds and oh, brown gravy. Look that at that. Sounds horrible. I know, but it's a Canadian thing. Look, I knew things about Canada. I just, I, I just eat their maple syrup <laughs> for a week. For a week. She did ask about any of their pancakes. I mean, this is the level of conversation we sunk to. Like, literally, the question was, "Did you eat any pancakes?" Oh Jesus! It sounds bad. It is. I just don't understand why it's so bad. Because she's quite normal. Yeah. And I'm obviously not. Yeah. Uh, she did say that uh, this weekend. She was like, oh, I'm going somewhere that I think you'd enjoy this weekend. And you're like this, Ellie. I was like, oh, yeah, where's that? She's like, yeah, I'm going to a place uh, called Pop World. <gasps> and I was like, mate, say no more. I know all about Pop World. Babylon, what we used to call it. Yep. That was back when it was super cool. Which, for, for the listeners who, you know, maybe aren't aware nightclub back from our uni days that just played like 90s cheesy pop music and then they rebranded to pop world and now they play cheesy pop music from all the ages yeah i mean i would still i think really enjoy it i think so but it's uh, the, the issue with pop world is we would back when we were at uni we were part of the there were like two age groups yeah at pop I know. World, at babylon uh, yeah. the old ones and the young ones yeah and we would now fall into the old one category and that makes me sad yeah same so i can never go back there yeah well it's what I said. I was like, I haven't been clubbing in like five years. It's like once you get into a, a sort of long term relationship, that's it. Your clubbing days are gone. And then did she say, I'm in a long term relationship and I go clubbing? No. No. Oh. So, but yeah, it's just you know. And then she was just asking me a load of questions about cat, and I was like, well, why don't you have a personal training session with cat if you're so interested? <laughs> and the thing is, right, like the other day, I, I was kind of telling cat, um, like we we saw my personal trainer, like as we were going to the gym the other day. Yeah. And she asked Kat, oh, did you like skiing? And Kat was like, no, nah, not really. And she said, oh, but we weren't sure if you would. And then afterwards, Kat's like, oh, why are you talking about me to your personal trainer, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, because she fucking asked me like about you all the damn time. I, I, I like that she, why does she like Kat so much? Not in like a, Kat's obviously lovely, but no. why does she like Kat so much if it feels like Kat doesn't really know her? No, exactly. It's really weird. It is a little bit weird. I guess it's probably because like, she feels like she knows her because I've had to speak about her so much and I obviously only speak nothing but high praise. Yeah, yeah, of course. So I know you. Probably, I've probably made Kat seem like this most amazing, wonderful woman. But, you know, we've met her. <laughs> Sorry, Kat. It's, no, she doesn't listen anymore. It's fine. Didn't you make her listen to the last episode you said? Yeah, but she said she stopped at the culture swap because she doesn't care about wrestling. Fair enough. We had some feedback about that, by the way. We'll get to it later, Liam. Housekeeping. No, it wasn't written feedback. It was just, like, verbal feedback. Oh, go on then, what? Um, someone said to me that they really enjoyed my wrestling questions and they were annoyed at you for making me stop. Uh, that's Isn't that two different things? Or are you doing one type of feedback there? I know one person. Yeah, that's just that was one person's feedback. Okay, that was the first person. Yeah, I mean, we had other people say how much they liked my questions, but they didn't mention specifically how annoyed they were at you. I'd like to point out to all our listeners, including the one who complained last time, there's there's two different angles that this podcast has. And that is Liam's angle, which I know we all love. I love it. I think it's fascinating listening to, listening to Liam. One of the reasons I wanted to start this podcast was so that you would all get to know Liam. But there is also the other angle, which is Editor Ellie, who has to sit through two and a half hours of us chuntering on again and then gets to a bit where Liam's going on about wrestling questions. I don't feel guilty when I edit. I don't go, yeah, I really did cut him off too early. And I'm like, no, good Lord. It's like 1am and I'm still editing. Yeah, I, I don't care. I know you don't. That's why I have to. Yeah. Um, the only other thing that I've really done is I've made plans. Oh, what plans have you made, Liam? I've made plans to go to this little place called the New Forest. Who are you going with? You and probably Kat. What are we doing there, Liam? Bike riding, in, in theory. We have to find like a bike rental place. and. I mean, th- this fascinates me because I'm, I'm up for it. I, I just want to go to the New Forest. I, I love the New Forest. Yeah. There's, there's two two things i'd like to sort of raise about it with you okay. which is one it's very close to you yeah i didn't know that you didn't i mean it's like it's, it's still like a 40 minute drive it's still very close to you yeah but it's not like so close that i would have passed it by accident and not realized uh, no no it isn't yeah it's not like on your way anywhere particularly yeah that's what i mean okay i'll allow that a little bit 
But I still think it's weird that you were looking for, you were complaining about how there's nowhere near you that you can go for walks and stuff. And I was like, well, just go I to mean, the forest. I mean, it's still no Canada, but yeah, whatever. It's not Canada, that's true. Uh, the second thing I'd like to raise is the fact that I'm, I'm fully on board with going biking. I love biking. I think it's fun. Um, you and Kat both haven't, or Kat hasn't ridden a bike since she was seven? Yeah, I, I rode a bike across the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco um, two or three years ago. Yep, and did anything happen when you did that? I fell off at the beginning. Yeah, so so we've got you who's got the potential to just immediately fall off. Most likely will, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cat who hasn't ridden for however many years. Yeah, but there's that saying, isn't there? Like It's like riding a bike, and that saying means... Yeah, but you two are clearly... Well, Cat's not disproven that. Cat might be perfect, but you you falling off is not a good sign. No, true, but I've got back on and got on with it, and, I, you know, San Francisco is really hilly, so not only did I have to, like, ride a bike, I also had to learn gears, which was new. I'd never done gears before. That seems weird. Well, no, because like, when I used to have a bike, it was back when we lived in, like, northwest London. So it's just riding around the block and trying not to get mugged. So it's not like there was hills to have to do gears and stuff with. All right, fair enough. Yeah. I, I used to... We had, like, a, a long road with a church on the corner. And I used to pedal as fast as I could and then try and skid around that corner. And I left, like, a load of tyre marks outside the church. Of course you did. You, you were such a little heathen. Oh, honestly. And, and I was, like, the good kid in the area. At one point, I was riding like down an alley, and it sort of came out onto a road. And I just rode straight into the side of a moving car. Jesus, Liam! I wasn't looking. What were you looking at? Mm, I don't know. I was distracted by something, but then a car came. That's very date. You shouldn't be doing that on bikes. Yeah, no, but I've learned that now. All right. Well, we're yeah, we're gonna go cycle in the new forest. And yeah, be and there'll be exciting. trails and stuff without cars around, so it'll be fine. Yeah, there won't be cars. There are a couple of roads in the new forest, but most of it is just forest and forest trails and stuff cat wanted to do a pub call yeah I, I i would be up for it but i'm also aware that it would be shit for you so unless we make you drive well, i just won't go <laughs> what to the new forest or to the pubs yeah no i'll just stay <laughs> i'll just get drunk at yours and then be like sorry i can't drive um there was also this other thing we found i don't really want to do this time necessarily because i really like the bike idea but there's like an outdoor laser tag thing at the new forest oh is there yeah I've, so I've, I've done Outdoor Laser Quest in the Isle of Wight. Okay. It is way more fun than normal Laser Quest. Well, especially for me when I probably wouldn't be able to see normal Laser Quest anymore. Oh, even then, it's just better. It's basically, the one we went to was basically paintballing, but without getting shot with tiny hard balls of paint. Yeah. And it was really fun. So I'm down for that at some point. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm all in for the bike idea, but maybe like another time. Yeah, yeah. Um, we also still need to arrange the board game weekend. I know we've tried, but your friends are difficult. I mean, to pin you need down. to give us a date. You haven't given us a date. We've got a list. Yeah, that I, I we've ticked all the ones off that we were available for. Yeah, yeah. It, Liam, you're hosting the game day. You need to pick a date. Has everyone filled out that list? I don't know, mate. You're sorting out the game day. Oh, what? This, How did this I. Is, listeners, this is a trend that has happened with Liam, and I don't know if it's a recent thing or if it's just something I haven't noticed, but he has a tendency to. Talk to me about sorting stuff out that either I'm sorting out or he's sorting out and then asking me questions like, when is this happening? And I'm like, well, just ask everyone. I, I don't know. And then he doesn't. He just asks me. Yeah. It's weird. You're like a font of knowledge. But <laughs> I don't know. I'm just checking now to see if it's all been filled. This, this, this isn't even podcast relevant. Is no, it? I don't know why you're doing this. Um, just do it later. Oh, yeah. People have filled it all out. We could have done next weekend. <laughs> so it's all your fault. There we go. Don't worry about it. All right. I won't. Uh, so moving swiftly on, what have you been up to? Not a whole lot. It's been a bloody inferno in London and the rest of England today. Yeah, it's been really nice. I'm in shorts right now. Oh, fuck off, mate. It's all right for you. All you people that work from home. Oh, look at the lovely weather. Let's open a window. I don't like opening my windows at home. Is that because all the bugs get in? Yeah. That's why I don't open them as well. I, I just put fans on. Yeah, but you've got that choice. Like, the the office I was at, that's fine. Yeah. It's got air con, the office is lovely. But... You step outside and you step into, you know, basically the Sahara Desert. Yeah. That's what it feels like. Yeah. And then you have to get on a train to go home. All the trains at London, Victoria were delayed by 50 minutes. So I had to walk to a different station. Oh, that's annoying. Then that train was rammed with people for three stops and then everyone got off. And I was like, cool, you've made this train an inferno but with all your body heat and then all yeah. pissed off anyway. I'm probably a bit BOE as well, right? Yeah, but I'm always so paranoid about my own BO that I don't notice other people's. Oh, okay. I'm always like, do I smell? Yes. I should be paying attention to if I smell. But there's not anything you can do. 
No, you just have to sit there and stink. Yeah. I mean, you could like, start spraying deodorant amount. I think that would be less helpful. People with asthma might be annoyed if I did that. Give a shit. <laughs> All right, well, that's the difference between me and you. Yeah. But yeah, that's literally, Liam, all I've done is nearly die today in the heat. But, but there's been like a whole week. What did you do on the weekend? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I went to I went out to a house. Right. Well, that's doing something. And got drunk. There you go. What was the occasion? Uh, my mate is back from Vietnam. Yeah. He's come back. So we all went out and got drunk together. Was that good? Played Settlers of Catan. That's a good game. But it is. Four people unless you get the expansion for six. My friends got the expansion, so there were, I think there were five of us. Oh, well, you're perfect then. Absolutely spot on. Was it um, like a different experience playing with extra people, or pretty uh, much the same? I, it's kind of different, just because you've got more people to worry about when you're trying to build roads and stuff. Yeah, but you've also got a slightly bigger map, haven't you? Yeah, but then because you've got more people anyway, you all end up... Because there's certain places that are good and some places that are bad, you all end up still grouping up around the good stuff. That makes sense. So even with the bigger map, you end up cutting everyone off and all that stuff yeah it's good but yeah that's about it that's about it Liam okay well moving on that was it you've you've now been caught up with Ellie and Liam not riveting a whole lot I think so far this is the best episode yet 100% everyone's uh, what do we do next Liam oh Liam has been to the cinema and here are the spoiler free reviews of the things that he saw at the cinema listeners I would like to raise a point of contention with all of you we've had discussions offline me and Liam have been discussing all week, trying Behind to solve this little conundrum we've got. It's a big conundrum. The conundrum being, Liam, that Liam watches too much shit and then tries to come on the show and do eight reviews. And I say, now look, the listeners want it, that's fine. But that is a huge chunk of the show where you are just talking about all the stuff you've seen and that is not what this show is. I know that you all like that bit. I it's, like it too it's sometimes. It's their favourite bit. This show is about culture swap as much as you all hate it. We do. That is the point of this show. So even if you all hate Culture Swap, deal with it. I really wish we we could like have more in depth stats on SoundCloud where we could actually see like when people click off. I'll be honest, it wouldn't make me change. The no, listeners know it, that it, I'm not doing this to get all the fans. I'm doing it to hang out with you. But it would be interesting. The but the thing is, listeners, we cannot allow Liam to do eight reviews. I know you we all can. want to hear his thoughts on certain films. He wants to do. Eight reviews, and that is too many. It's, it's not just films. There's a couple of TV shows, and there's even I mean. a video game in there. That's fine. It's all fine. I just think that we should limit it to three an episode from you, three an episode from me if I've got three. I usually don't use that time. And then that's it. We've got a nice little section. You can all listen to it. And then what, what we used to do, which I think is the ideal solution to this, is which, when the yeah. YouTube was up to date, yeah. Liam used to upload the extra bits to YouTube. So if anyone wanted, if anyone was like, oh, I really wanted to hear what Liam said about, you know, Film yeah, we had a few. We had a few like exclusive ones. I remember one of them being Triple X Three: The Return of Xander yeah. Cage. That was an exclusive YouTube video. That was one of the ones that got our YouTube channel taken down, wasn't it? Yep. <laughs> That's why <laughs> I remember it so well. <laughs> but yeah, so that was the ideal solution in my book. Is that way we, the the podcast gets to stay the normal length. And we don't have to worry about shoving extra stuff in. We just do it at the at the end or in this bit, and I edit it out, and Liam can make YouTube videos for it. Yeah, and we will get back to doing that once the YouTube's up to date. The reason the YouTube isn't up to date, listeners, is that Liam has gone back and is doing the back catalogue. Yeah. Why? I'm not asking you, Liam. I know why. I'm saying to the listeners, Just why? like a, a metaphor. He has why? been told by two separate people that this is a bad idea. No one cares about the back catalogue. Just put the new stuff up. That's what people care about. I think he should upload the back catalogue, but it's just whole episodes, so they're up there, and then we just move on and we get back to what we used to do. Listeners, please let us know what you think about this. I don't give a shit. I'm enjoying doing it my way, and I'm going to carry on until it's done. It's weird, that, Liam. It's weird that you don't give a shit about what the listeners think, because I believe one of your big arguments for why you should be allowed to do more reviews is that's what the listeners want. Okay, so let me let me rephrase that, maybe. Oh, okay, yeah, please do. It's not that I don't give a shit about what the listeners want. I right, care okay. very deeply about the listeners want. Got you. As long as it matches what I want. Yeah, right. There we go. That makes sense. So what I'm going to do this time, listeners, because I'm so nice to my dear friend Liam and not at all a bitch. Well, uh, well no. I've, 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 Liam mm. put forward the proposal that he should be allowed 15 minutes to do his reviews. I said, no, 15 minutes is too long. Don't be ridiculous. You're getting 10. Right. So Liam is going to try and fit eight reviews this week, Liam. Yeah. Into 10 minutes. I have my phone, listeners. I will be timing. So, and I will cut him off the moment the 10 minutes elapse. Before we start, 
I've not hit start yet, so you're okay. I would like to apologise to any listeners that are re- like really looking forward to you know hearing in depth thoughts. Yep. You ain't getting those this time, I'm afraid. Uh, you can email Liam or tweet at us, and Liam can tell you what he thinks, but he has 10 minutes. I think 15 is better. It probably is, but you've got 10. It's unfortunate. It's... Are you ready? Uh, hang on. It's like a fun little game, this, Liam. It's, it is, isn't it? Are you ready, Liam? Uh, hang on. I'm just trying to figure out what order I should do this in. You should have, should have done it before the podcast, really, shouldn't you? I've just got to get one thing up as well before we start. Okay. Which is a tweet. Have you like pre-recorded a 10 minute diatribe of you being like, this is unfair. That would have been so good. I wish I had now. It would have been. Uh, yes, I'm ready. All right, your time starts now. Liam went to cinema. Now it's time for a spoiler for reviews of the things that you saw at the cinema. Uh, the first thing I saw, Ghost Stories, because Sophie Jade tweeted us saying, you need to review Ghost Stories for me so I know it's safe to see it in the cinema. Okay, thanks. Save your money. Don't bother. It's not very good. Basically, it's like three stories in one film and the first story's all right and then the second and third just aren't that good. And then like at the end, it tries to kind of like wrap it all up in this like really smart way, but it's not very smart. It's a two out of five. Disappointing. It's a real shame I wanted it to be good. Uh, Next, I saw Rampage, which I thought, you know what? It's not going to be great, but it might be really, really fun. Good popcorn movie. I'm always down to go see The Rock. And it's also got Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who's basically playing like another version of Negan, essentially. That's quite cool. And it's also just got like big fuck off genetically mutated monsters. And obviously, yep. I'm quite keen into genetic mutations at the moment because I need them to fix my eyes. Uh, Depressing. Rampage, just not fun enough. Really not fun. Like you would expect, oh, no. you would expect it to be fun, and it's not. The thing is, right? What where the movie works best is the Rock has this relationship with this like monkey that's a yeah, gorilla yeah. that they've done like out of CGI but even though it's CGI they've still like built a really good relationship and that's like the first maybe like 20 minutes and then the gorilla gets this like genetic thing and then they kind of lose that relationship for the majority of the movie and then only really bring it back for like the last 10-15 minutes so it's like oh. why did you just like sideline the best part of this movie so yeah, 2.5 like out of 5 Deus Ex Machina yeah exactly not very good 2.5 out of 5 uh, next I saw Love Simon uh, it's one of those like feel good movies. I was banging on a lot about this film called Wonder. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the one with Owen Wilson? Yeah, it is. Wonder is yeah. amazing. I loved it. I made Cat watch it on the plane going to Canada, and she really enjoyed it. Um, it's not like your typical sort of like it's got loads of kids in it, and I normally hate movies with kids in. Anyway, this isn't a review of Wonder, even though Wonder is great. This is a review of Love Simon, which is that also sort of feel good thing, but they're like teenagers in high school, and it's about this guy who's gay, and he basically gets outed, and it's how he deals with it. And I, I like it, but the main character just does some things. He's he's being blackmailed, right? And he does yeah. some things that make him a bit douchey. And you kind of see why, because he's being blackmailed. But also, you're still like, oh, it's a bit douchey. And then he just does something towards the end that just really kind of like got under my skin a little bit. Um, and I can't say what, because it would be getting into spoiler territory. Yeah, no but spoilers. It's hard when like, I really wanted to like this film, but they just, for some reason, made the main character just like a little bit... I don't know, I struggled to kind of... Uh, sympathise with why he was doing some of the things he was doing fair enough Uh, i want to see this film so i might review it as well at some point yeah you should and then then we can actually have a proper discussion on it but at the moment this was a 3.5 out of 5 which is still decent but could have been better yep um i saw tomb raider very average alicia vikander does a british accent and that's basically the highlight uh it's based off of the the tomb raider reboot that they brought out not too long ago which i super enjoyed um play that instead of watching this movie this movie's not is it as gory as that game not really. So, is it better or worse than the original Tomb Raider films? I don't really remember them, so I can't really fairly Fair compare. Uh, I'd give it 3 out of 5. Like, it's not the worst movie, and for a video game adaptation, that's probably not too bad. Yep. But not great. Uh, how much time have I got left? 6 minutes 30. Oh, sweet. I'm getting through this. Uh, Burnout Paradise. It's a PlayStation 4 remaster of Burnout Paradise, and... Like they they make this like big deal. Oh, it's like 4K resolution. It runs like 60 frames per second. And yeah, it does. It doesn't look that good. Like yeah, I've seen videos of it. It doesn't look that good. Really isn't. It it it, it obviously looks slightly better than what it used to look like. But this isn't the sort of game that I'd be like, oh, come check out how amazing this game looks. Nah, not doesn't look that good. It's annoying as well, to be honest. Um, like any time you crash, it goes into this like weird animation of you crashing and. Yep. It, it really disrupts the flow of the game. And the other thing is, it's all about like doing these impressive like stunts. 
But if you don't land those stunts absolutely perfectly, you just immediately crash. So I feel like it it would be a lot more fun if it was a bit more lenient. So like if you just landed it, but it still kind of let you off, that would be a lot more fun and would feel a lot cooler than it just being really punishing if you don't absolutely land perfectly. Yeah, did you play the original one? I don't think so, no. Okay, I, I don't think I did either, but I definitely had friends who did. Yeah, it's just not that impressive. I completed it as well. Like, and you know, like my version of completion is the platinum yeah, yeah. trophy. Did that in maybe two weeks of casual playing. I mean, you, you messaged us pretty soon after being like, "I might get this game." Being like, "I finished this game completely." Yeah, two point five out of five. It's all right for like a racing game. Like, if it scratches that itch that I had, but not great. Uh, yeah. Then I went back to cinema to see A Quiet Place, which was directed by John Krasinski, who you might know as Jim from The Office US. Yep. Yep. Uh, he also stars in it with his real-life wife, Emily Blunt, and they also play a couple in it. Uh, it has um, this girl in it who plays their daughter called uh, Melissa Simmons, I think. I don't have IMDb in front of me, and I don't want to eat into my time looking that nope, up. Nope, nope, yep. But um, she's an actual deaf actress playing a deaf character. Oh, really? Yeah, she's really good. Uh, she has like one of those faces that is really emotive. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, yeah, so the movie, if you don't know the premise, it's basically... Um, these monsters come to earth and they can detect sound really easily so you have to be super quiet it's called a quiet place um problem is uh cat really liked it she found it really tense i didn't it, it was fine but one they show you the monster way too early so that just immediately removes a lot of tension for me yeah and it, like when i when i think of tense movies uh, especially when it comes to like monsters and revealing the monster my go-to is always the descent which isn't a great movie, but the way that they show that monster the first time you see it is just so effectively done. And I kind of wish that this had been a bit more interesting with how they revealed the monsters. And I don't know, it, it, I just didn't find it tense. And I don't know why it annoyed me that I didn't, because I really wanted to enjoy it. Yeah, that's a shame. I really want to see it as well. Yeah, I still liked it. It was still fine. It's just I was expecting it to be scary, scary. Yeah. And it was just all right. It's 3.5 out of 5. Uh Next one's going to be real quick. It's season two of Parenthood. I spoke about season one already. Season two, not as good, but still amazing. Uh, there's a character in it called Adam, played by Peter Kraus. He's my favourite. He does this thing where he'll get the fever and start dancing. And it's amazing. Like, it's proper dad dancing because he plays a dad. And he's fantastic. Uh, there's like there's a storyline in it that I get it, but it's like two of my favourite characters essentially fighting. And that just makes oh. me sad. Um, but I totally get where both of the characters are coming from uh, and if I was in the character that did the wrong thing I probably would have also done the wrong thing that the character did because he basically sleeps with this like super hot woman but he shouldn't have um, but I would have 4 out of 5 still really yeah, good yeah you're a dickhead so that's not a fair yeah well uh, also watch Jessica Jones season 2 which came out on the Netflix uh, about a month ago or now I think I really like season 1 season 2 not so good uh, it doesn't really have a villain like season 1 it was all about Tennant as the villain yeah, and he was great. He was amazing. He really made that show so good. And it also had that whole like PTSD element to it. So not only was it like a good comic book sort of show, but it was also saying something. Yeah. And I liked that. This one, uh, it just, it lacked focus. It was all over the place. Uh, Kristen Ritter was still good. Now, that's something I want to talk about because, right, it's revealed in the trailer, but it's not revealed until like episode eight. So I don't know if it counts as a spoiler or not. I think it probably does. I won't talk about it then, but... Sorry. Put it this way, if you know what I'm talking about because you've seen the trailer and you can kind of deduce, it's not worth the wait, and that's really disappointing. Um, two out of five for Jessica Jones season two. Jeez, that's true. That's all my reviews done. You ha- you finished, Liam, with a minute 30 to spare. Look at that. See? I told you I could do it. I'm glad you could. Look at that. We worked together, Liam, and you managed to do all your reviews, and it didn't take half the show, so I'm proud of you. I think people enjoy it more when we get a bit deeper into these things. And yeah, I can they, they, they probably do. I, I agree. So I think you should probably pick three an episode that you can go into more depth on because I think that's more interesting for everyone. But well, now we've you all just have this up. need to do eight I, an episode. I wanted to catch up. Now we're caught up. It should be good. If anyone is desperate to hear a specific one of Liam's things that they want to know more about, let us know and maybe we can slot it in next episode. No, it's done now. Okay, cool. I'm fine with that. Housekeeping. No? Oh, cool. Thanks. What? Not going to ask me if I've been to the cinema or done anything. It's fine. Have you? Whatever. Ha- have you? Housekeeping. No, fine. No, fuck it. Housekeeping. Have you, though? No, it's all right. Let's go housekeeping. No, whatever. no. no please tell me about Ellie's... all of not, the... Not important if Ellie's got any reviews, because this section's Liam's section. Tell me all about the reviews you have, Ellie. <laughs> I haven't got any. <laughs> yeah, I didn't I'm 70% through American Psycho. All right. 
I mean, at, at this point, that almost feels like a housekeeping topic. It probably should. I wonder if it should be. Uh, nah. Yeah, because the actual review is going to be in this review section. Yeah, when you get to it. And I'm going to use my ten minutes. That's fine. I I was editing an episode. Um, I think it was like episode fourteen or something. It was. It was episode fourteen where I reviewed Everybody Wants Some. Fifteen minutes that review went on for. Just for one thing. Yep. Jeez. <laughs> Didn't have you whinging in that one. Was that one of the ones you were editing? Oh, it might, might have been. Yeah, there we go. That's early enough that it could have been. Yeah, it's entirely possible. Um, if you want to listen to that, it's available now on YouTube. Oh, look at that. See? How, how convenient. And for any new listeners, if you go on the YouTube, it's going to sound like I have a different name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't quite... I mean, it's going to sound like that for a while. I mean, that's the weird thing for me. Yeah, I, I imagine like when you go back to listen, you're like, what the fuck is this? I mean, it's unhelpful when people find our YouTube and not this stuff. And I'm like, no, that isn't who I am. So, bad times. But we will catch up. That's why I want you to catch up quicker, but you won't, so... Well, you know, I've got to get to episode 52, and we're on 15 at the moment, so... Well, you're doing a shit job. Uh, housekeeping. Keeping the house. Have you, Liam, done anything that we have done as a culture swap? I've started reading volume three of Kid or Be Killed. Oh, good. Oh, how, how's that going? I'm enjoying it so far. I, I've... About halfway through it, I'd need to finish it off before I can, like, talk about it properly. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd still recommend reading more of it. Yep, it is definitely in my to read pile. Uh, have you done any like? Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't think so. I was just so enthralled by our culture swap this week, Liam, that I just haven't couldn't haven't been able to do anything else. That's right. We had some tweets come in. Oh, did we? Yeah, 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 yeah. We've dealt with a couple of them already, sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We dealt with with Sophie's. We had uh, Sam Fryer tweeted us. Yep. Yeah. Well, quote tweeted us saying, "This is a pretty cool episode, mainly because I'm in it." He was. And then he said, always a pleasure, lady and gent. So, Thanks for coming on, Sam. Amanda tweeted us, saying, enjoyed hearing about Liam Underwood's trip to Canada. Sorry to hear that skiing was not fun for Kat. My question, what did Kat do while Liam was off skiing? Basically just sat around drinking hot chocolate. Which, to be fair, does sound like quite a good holiday. Mm. Just chill out, drink some hot chocolate. I mean... Less cool because everyone else has gone skiing. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... For, for someone that enjoys skiing, the thought of doing that instead of, like, throwing yourself down a mountain just seems awful, but... The fact that you described it as throwing yourself down a mountain makes me think you might not be a professional skier. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm a long way from professional. I'm at the, did I survive? Yes, good. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, bear in mind, it was like 10 days, uh, what, how many was that? Uh, seven days of skiing, and I didn't fall yeah. over once. No, I'm impressed. I wasn't trying to belittle you, Liam. You did well. Well, it sounded like you were trying to be belittling. I wasn't. Uh, Amanda tweeted us saying, by the way, I'm not mad at Liam for disliking our other dogs. I had braced myself for his negative review in advance. I figured the combination of Wes Anderson and stop motion animation wouldn't go over well. I really like the film, but I also prefer Fantastic Mr. Fox. Yeah, I don't know why Liam actually went to see that film, because let's be honest, on paper, he should have hated it. And, and that is I did. happened. <laughs> yeah, because I've seen all of Wes Anderson's films so far. So you just sort of keep going. Yeah, I've got a list on Letterboxd of his films all ranked... Isle of Dogs came in last, which did surprise me. Wow, that is impressive. Yeah. Uh, then I just spoke to Amanda a bit on Twitter about it. I won't go into that now. Um, she did say, I totally understand what Ellie is saying about being 50 mins in and not halfway through, but I do want to know what Liam thought of A Quiet Place and Parenthood Season 2 and Jessica Jones. And there with you go. A, And with A Quiet Place, is it horror or thriller? Could I handle it? Um, hmm. I think Amanda could handle it. Yeah. I, I don't really like this is it horror or thriller discussion that's been happening about the movie because I kind yeah, of... Yeah, but I, I get what Amanda means. No, I, I yeah, I get what he means, but I feel like horror is is such a hard category because essentially what horror should be is something that scares you. That should be yeah. what horror is. But then you're like bringing this like personal level to it. Yeah, that's fair. So if you're not scared by the idea of these monsters that react to sound then you would probably find it more of a thriller. But if that idea absolutely terrifies you, you're going to say this is 100% a horror. But okay, so so I don't know as much about how the genres and shit are defined. But to me, a horror isn't necessarily does it scare you. I picture horror more as the atmosphere that the film is yeah. going for. Not necessarily getting, but going for. Does it intend to scare? Yeah, yeah. In which case I would what, say it a... is a horror. So what's a, what is a thriller? What is like the definition of a thriller? Because well, I, I consider mo- a movie like Seven to be a thriller. Okay, okay. But I equally I w- I would get why someone would put that under horror. Yeah, because some people that weren't into like body horror stuff might. Yeah, it's really a real hate. blurry line. 
Yeah, it feels like thrillers like a subgenre of horror. Sort of. I just think there's a, there's a lot of overlap. Yeah, probably. Um, yeah. As as for Amanda handling it, I hope she goes to see it, and I hope she can handle it. But I don't want it to be my fault if she can't. <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably fairly. She did say that um, she saw someone compare it to Signs, which is a movie that she loves, and. I have to admit, while watching it, I was getting Signs vibes. Oh, really? Yeah. So okay. she might be all right. Yeah, I, I like Signs. That's a sort of relevant point. Carry on. <laughs> no, that's, that's an absolutely fine point. So then there was just a load of me and you bickering about yep. doing reviews. And Kat just chimed in saying, well, you two shut up. Kat was me. And then Amanda said, sorry, Kat, I was encouraging them. <laughs> Amanda was winding us up and making us fall out. Yeah. So She does it on purpose. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and then, right, this is what I take umbrage to. Umbridge Go on. Amanda tweeted saying, Oh my god, Sam is my new favourite because he likes The Godfather, which is my favourite movie. Yeah, I've just seen that. Now, we've given Amanda 60... By the time this comes up, 63 episodes plus specials. Of pure gold. Pure gold. Sam comes along in one episode, new favourite. What? It's just ridiculous. Uh, abs- absolutely livid. Can't believe it. I don't, I don't know why, why we put this much effort in, Ellie. I like the idea that we are just doing it for Amanda. Looking at our like Twitter yeah. mentions, <laughs> we might be what it feels like, and I'm 100 percent okay with that. Tom listens. That's true, but he doesn't tweet us as much as he used to. He doesn't. Calling him out there. He has. He did send us a message and say, "This is my." Yeah, do you want me to read that out? May as well. I don't remember what he said. Uh, right, let me just find it. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. Uh, he says. Wrestle- the Wrestlemania ep was great. I don't watch wrestling, but the culture swap was still a fun listen. I actually enjoyed Liam's questioning of things because I don't know the intricacies of it at all. Not the only one that enjoyed my questioning. Yep. Like I said, if it was a shorter episode, it would have been fine. Uh, Sam responded to Amanda. You know, look at them. Best friends all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. Saying, that's always bet, good to she- hear. Oh, she's going to get him on as her Zac Efron expert. No, she'll get him on as the Godfather expert, which I'm absolutely okay with because the Godfather's yeah. not that good of a film. Like, it's a decent film, but like, oh, it's not as good as everyone makes out. I didn't like it. It's so dark. That's all I remember. Like, I, I just was watching it. Like, can someone just fix the lighting of this movie? It's just long. It is also really long. I just remember. I remember it getting to the halfway point and there being a scene that I distinctly remember feeling like it could have been the end of the film. But and I, I turned to who I was watching it with, and I was like, "Oh, is that like the end? Of we? Is that how it ends?" And she was like, "No, that's we're only halfway through." And I was like, "Are you fucking serious?" Yeah. The- I struggle with gangster movies, and this is kind of like the daddy of the gangster movies. Yeah, exactly. I'm not a fan of the gangster genre. What is your is- issue with with the gangster genre? I don't know. I just I don't. I never. I've never got into one really. I think there might be. Oh, I feel like there's one that I've seen that I was like, that's actually quite good, but I can't remember what the fucking one it was. Scarface. I haven't seen Scarface. It's not that good. I'd be surprised if it was that one. It's just I don't know. I don't know what the issue is. It's, I, I just don't get them into them. Really like predictable because you've all it. Uh, sp- weeping blankets blanket statements here but yeah. generally you've got like a, a guy who wants to get into crime gets into crime gets really successful at crime the movie can't end there because that's a horrible message to send out to audiences yeah. so then you have them inevitably losing everything yeah and then it ends yeah no you're right that is the sort of yeah i think you might have hit the nail on the head there they are very predictable yeah i find that so boring because you're literally just like right that that box is ticked that box is ticked okay We've just seen them achieve everything they wanted to achieve, so now we wait for it to all go wrong. Yep. But, you know, Amanda and her new best friend Sam think The Godfather is amazing. (laughs) Uh, Sam responded saying, "Uh, that's always good to hear. The Godfather is one of the best films ever. And whenever you see a list of greatest films, you always see it up there with Godfather Part 2 as well. Amanda said, I also love Part 2. It's probably in my top 25 favourite films. I've actually never watched Part 3 because I don't want to be disappointed. I own it, but the longer I put it off, the longer I can live in my bubble of the perfection of the first two. Watch the third one. The first two are still going to be as good as they are, even if you've seen the third one. Like The third one shouldn't affect your opinion of the first two. No, but it, it does as a whole. Like If one Lord of the Rings film was shit, it would affect your opinion of the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, but those are the, the plot to those are so intricate, whereas with The Godfather, especially part three, it's, it's obviously the same characters, but it's not in the same way where it's like this... Part two doesn't end leading into part three in the same no, way. No, 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 that's fine. Does. But do you know what I mean? It, it, like, it still affects the series. 
Yeah, but I just don't think it should affect your enjoyment of it the It won't. It won't affect the man's two. opinion of one and two. But I could. See, but at the moment, she's only seen one and two, so her opinion of one and two is good, and her yeah. opinion of the whole thing is good. Yeah. Well, if Sam, she watches the third one and hates it, then one and two would still be good, but her opinion of the whole would drop by a third. I get that. Sam did come back saying, yeah, three isn't as good as the other two. Still an enjoyable film, but when you're following two of the greatest films ever, hard to live up to the hype. Fair point. I guess like another example that would be Star Wars with the prequels and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I still enjoy the originals despite the prequels. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can still enjoy the other films, but Star Wars as a whole definitely suffered because the prequels exist. And I still enjoy The Force Awakens despite the atrocious job that Last Jedi did. Yeah. Just ridiculous. Yeah. The, so the, so the reason why I bring that up is because The Last Jedi recently got released in the UK and I'm just seeing loads of people on Twitter just bumming it again and I, I don't understand. Yeah, I was seeing that. Suddenly fans were going back and being like, actually, I've rewatched it and this scene is so meaningful now. Yeah. Well, I was like, well, it's because what? it came out on DVD, so people yeah. are watching it and it's just, oh, it's not good. No. It's not good. I don't I don't get the love for it. To me, uh, Last Jedi feels more in line with the prequels, whereas Force Awakens felt in line with like the original trilogy. Yep, 100%. And if I'm going to want a new movie to be in line with one of those two, I'm going to want it to be with the original trilogy, not the fucking prequels. Either that, or I want them to go fully into um, like trade embargoes and stuff. I would love a Star Wars film that was all the trade negotiations at the start of the first film. I think You know how like I would love that Avengers movie where they just sit around talking, but I'm the only one that would love that? Yeah. I feel like that's you with what you've just suggested there. I think you'd enjoy it. It depends who, who, who they get doing the talking. Qui-Gon Jinn. Also, oh, I just have to make this one point. I've, I recently on. edited our uh, Civil War episode, and yep. you were talking about how ridiculous it would be if Iron Man ever meets Rocket Raccoon, which I was saying I was really looking forward to. Yeah. And it does look like, looking at the trailers for Infinity War, I might get my wish of seeing that. Yeah, we'll see if it is a bad thing or not. I'm so excited. We'll find out, Liam. It'll happen soon. Uh, I've got my tickets booked to go see it next week. I, I would um, suggest we do a special, but... If I've got to wait like three weeks for you to get around to seeing it. I'm not going to wait three weeks to see this film. How long are you going to wait? Obviously. I don't know. I'll see it as pretty soon after it comes out. It's coming out on Thursday. Yeah, I'll see it pretty soon after that. Why don't you see it on Thursday? Because I've not booked tickets. Why don't you book tickets? Jesus fucking Christ, let's move on. Culture swap. Swap my culture. We watched Feast. It wasn't good. Oh, the end. Good ep, Liam. Good ep. I told you we'd get it done in under an hour. <laughs> Honestly, oh, this film... There's going to be spoilers. We're going to ruin this film. There's nothing to ruin. I have to admit, I did suggest this film because when I did first... like, I watched it uh, probably 10 years ago. And I remember thinking it was all right. To the point where Which... like, I, I, I've watched the entire trilogy and I remember kind of thinking that it was all right. I mean, it's weird. I remember... You, it's not... I don't think I'd blame you for this film. Not like some of the other stuff where you've been like, this is a good film, we should do it. Because we were sort of looking for a short one. Yeah. Because we knew the episode was being recorded soon. I mean, we wanted, like, I we didn't want ago. like a, um, we didn't want a sci-fi, we didn't want a coming of age. Marvel yeah, we wanted core. like a middle ground film that both of us could feasibly enjoy. Yeah, that's not this film though, is it? No, it isn't. But at least we both didn't like it. Yeah, that's true. But I, yeah, it's just bad. Yeah. It's just a bad film, a bad film that got made. And so what happens in the film? So the the plot in air quotes of this film is a group of people are all in this sort of what do you call it like a pub that's you know in the middle of fucking it's like nowhere. a dive bar. Yeah, it's like a dive bar in the middle of shit all nowhere where a bunch of people who are all dregs of society mixed with you know a few randomers are all hanging out and drinking and then monsters attack and they have to survive. Yeah, basically. That's like that's that's the idea that someone sat down at a table and said, "This is the film I'm making." And then they went, "All right, let's make it a kind. Let's try and make it funny and try and make it a bit gory and yep. let's get Jason Mewes in it." Yep. Why not? Jason Mewes, for those that are unaware, he, he is like the J of J and Silent Bob. It's just... <sighs> He's in it for about five minutes. Yeah, yeah, he is. Then he gets his face ripped off. Which is so. Th- this is one of the issues this film has. Is it what it's trying to? It's trying to be clever. Do you in think? The, yeah, there is an attempt at sort of it, part of the like the comedy part of it is that they've got this thing that runs throughout the film where when a new character enters, you get like yeah. a splash screen of that character. Their name is something like you know, there's heroine, hero. Uh, I can't remember all the other ones, but there's a bunch of grandma, edgy cat, Harley mum, vet. 
Yeah. Boss that... man. Coach Honey Pie. Yeah. Hot Wheels is a guy in a wheelchair. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yep. Um, and so all these characters pop up. They get a little thing that's like, what do they do? Which is a little joke. And then it's like life expectancy. As in, you know, we've seen a horror film. How long will this person survive? Yeah. And one of the, the bits... So that's the, the bit where they're trying to then be clever is like the hero turns up. And it's like life expectancy the whole film, obviously. Yeah. And then he dies. And it's like, oh, <laughs> how crazy are we killing off the hero? Yeah. Like, and... When it was when the film first started and it started doing that, I was like, oh, "Okay, I, I'm I'm on board with this. Like, it's they're going to use this for laughs. Like, one of the characters they say is going to die is going to be the one that lasts the longest, obviously." Yeah, they've got like like there's a kid and they're like, "We wouldn't kill a kid, would we?" Yeah. Um, and like with Hot Wheels, there's something like uh, they they say something along the lines of him being in a wheelchair. Like, we wouldn't dare yeah. attack him, would we? And, and yeah, it's yeah. So it's them trying to play on the whole like all these stereotypes in films, but instead of doing that well. And actually being like, it's silly. Like when, because, so after Hero dies very quickly. Yeah. They introduce heroin. Yeah. And they're like, the second one, maybe this will be lucky. And like the way that you actually play on the, the hero always dies is you kill off the first guy. That makes sense. You do that. And then the heroine turns up, who's your strong female lead. And you make her win because that's then you playing on that. Yeah. But just killing them again and killing everyone. And leaving like two people alive. You're not playing on the stereotype there. You're just killing everyone. Yeah, it's just dumb. Yeah, it honestly is. I I lost interest. That that scene also. It happens throughout the film. Like every now and again, someone will pop up and they'll give them one. Yeah. But the first, I I I know that I timed it and it was fourteen minutes, I believe. Yeah. Which is literally just them going. Bam, the hero. Duh, yeah. Duh, 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 duh. Yeah. Bam, Hot Wheels. Duh, 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 duh. Bam, and I was like, after about five minutes, I was like, this is ridiculous this needs to stop yeah. and it doesn't no and then i think the other thing is um like they they so they do they do kill a kid quite quickly which i have to admit even though i've seen it before i'd forgotten that had happened i was like oh, i wasn't expecting that yeah but when they have these monsters attacking every single time without fail the camera just goes into this like epileptic fit yes it just freaks out yeah and it's just it then just becomes painful to watch because you can't like it's it's already dimly lit. Yeah. Probably to hide like low budget. Uh, and then they're doing these like quick cuts and the shaky camera stuff, and it's just it's it's annoying to watch. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. I think like none of the characters are particularly likable. Nope. I there there was. I'm trying to think if there was like a character that I was like. I think the mum of that kid. Yeah, she was alright. She's the only character I had sympathy for, where I was like, she's clearly like being forced into prostitution, basically, by her situation. Yeah. yeah. Which then you're like, oh, that's sympathetic. But she's like the only one. Yeah. Maybe the first heroine as well. Yeah, she was all right. Uh, the, one of the things I didn't like, they had this whole like storyline with um, Beer Guy, where he kind of like starts, one, one of the monsters sicks all over him, and then he starts like finding maggots and stuff, and he, he essentially just starts rotting. Yeah. And it just, I was just a bit like, where's this going? Yeah, because I thought it was him, I thought it was going to be him turning into one of the monsters. Yeah. Also, yeah, go on. Scene where the monsters just have sex. Yeah, right. So this is one of my real issues with this film, like big issues. Yeah. Is one, it's it's going for the cheap laugh, which is fine. That works in some films. They're like, ha, look, sex, ha ha, farts, poop, vomit, all funny. Mm. But this film doesn't do it in the way that makes that good, which is like, you know, actually being, I don't know, clever about it, maybe. Not even clever. Like, Dumb and Dumb is not a clever film, but it yeah, works. Yeah, This is just, like, kind of offensive about it. Like, yeah. I don't I don't need to see a scene where... Like, th- there is a scene where they... Um, I can't remember her name. The Tough Chick. Is it Tuffy? Uh, I, I, yeah, possibly. Yeah. Probably. Maybe. There's a girl who gets her leg cut off at the start of the film. Yeah. Later on in the film, they, they decide they're going to use her dead body as bait to draw the monsters in and then blow it up. Yeah. Uh, it turns out she's still alive, and the sort of one of the more bad characters is like, no, she was never alive. We didn't see this. We're gonna do it anyway, which yeah. they do. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so you're making a point here. Like, he's the baddie. That's fine. But then they have a scene where one of the monsters just rapes her in the mouth, and I was like, that's unnecessary. Yeah. Like that's not funny. It's not you making a point. It's just crass. And yeah. honest, like honestly, to the point where I was like, I'm just revolt. Like I'm not even revolted in like a gore or horror way i was just like this is just in poor taste it's not funny yeah like like there's another scene like nowhere near on that level but it's just it just feels unnecessary where like um 
that they shut a door on a monster and he gets his dick stuck in it and someone yells out like monster cock. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just it's immature. It's immature and not in a not in a smart, funny way. It's just immature. Yeah, like a little kid got hold of a, a pen and started writing on his dad's script, and then his dad got drunk, filmed the film, and went, "Wait a minute, I don't remember all these weird sex scenes I put in." Yeah. Oh yeah, no. This film left a bad taste in my mouth after I finished watching. I'm not surprised. Yeah. I've got the other two to watch. Are you actually going to watch them? I kind of have to, to get my list down. Oh, God. I mean, they're short, at least. I do remember something that happens in, I think, the second one. That, that at least the first time I saw it really made me laugh, and I wonder if it still will. I hope it doesn't. I hope that it turns out you watched all these films drunk. Yeah, that's entirely possible. Entirely possible. You just possible. go back and watch them, and you're like, what was I doing? And I remember how the third one ends, and I remember being like, well, it's a bold way of ending this trilogy, but... We'll see. Honestly, I'll cover those in the housekeeping in future, but as for now, with Feast, I just like, I started watching it with Kat and she emailed actually. Um, oh, yeah. She sent us an email saying, Thoughts on Feast? Big pile of poo, full of crap jokes, rubbish stereotypes, and Jay Muse deserves better. Hashtag justice for Jay. Yep, that's fair. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, to the point where it's so, like, you see the monsters having sex, and like, immediately one of them basically just like craps out a baby monster. Yeah. Like,. I don't know if we're doing justice to how terrible this film is. Yeah, I really want people to understand how bad this is. Yeah, like... Like, it's just it's just so so blindingly poor. Hmm. And I'm, just, I'm trying to think, is there any part of it that I didn't mind? And I, I do think a couple of the characters are okay. Yeah. Um, it nearly tackles some interesting ideas. Nearly, like 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 you were saying that whole like the woman who they think is dead and they use her essentially as bait and yeah. it, and then it turns out that she's not dead. That like moral quandary that they're put in could have been interesting if they'd have actually done something with it. Yeah, and instead the two char- one of the characters is like, no, we'll just kill her anyway, and the other character instead of being like the one who's like, no, we shouldn't do this, does it and yeah. then regrets it. Yeah, is like, oh, we shouldn't have done it, and you're like, okay, cool, what? Exactly. Um... And then the the whole getaway, like, it's just all poorly written. The getaway makes no sense. They're like, the only way we can escape is through this hatch in the basement Yeah. that will let us get out because the monsters don't know it's there. Yeah. Sorry, where does it lead? What? Yeah. Why would the monsters not fucking know it's there? Oh, uh, yeah, just silliness. Just non-stop silliness. Um, and not good silliness, just bad silliness. It has Henry Rollins in, which, like, just surprised me. What would I know him from? Um, He... Is, hang on. He's famous for something, but I can't remember what it is. <laughs> he, he, like I know I've seen, I've seen him in like an episode, um maybe one of the films, but he's he's been in Jackass before. And the reason they got him in Jackass is because he's like well known. Oh okay. I think he was in a band, maybe Black Flag. I don't know them. Um, yeah, they're a punk band, Black Flag. You probably would know like of them. Oh okay. Uh yeah, that's right. So that's what he's known for. Okay, but yeah, yeah, he was in Jackass, and he's he's been in loads of stuff basically, and also yeah. Feast, which yeah, yeah, I mean, how did they get two these two big name people in it? Like, I mean, the thing is, it's like two thousand and five, so Jay or like Jason Mewes, not exactly a huge name. No, that's fair, I guess. Um, and it really is just a cameo. Ugh, ugh, ugh. I just think like none of not not none, but very few of the characters come across as remotely likable. Yeah, or even interesting. It's just, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, like, like you said, like, the mum who loses her kid is interesting. Yeah. Um, I quite like the, the brotherly relationship with the guy in the wheelchair and his sort of, sort of douchey older brother. Yeah. Um, I hated the boss man guy. Yep. Um, I, I didn't mind the, the barkeeper dude. Yeah, but he didn't do anything, really. No, he didn't do a lot. Um, grandma... That's the thing, I feel like, I feel like it, like, it sort of skews... Like the ones you do like, because most of them are just such like utterly boring pieces of crap. Yeah. That anyone who doesn't offend you or you know do something shit, you're just like, well, they're all right. Yeah, exactly. Like um, the grandma didn't particularly do anything, did she? I sort of vaguely remember she was fine. Did she existed. You, did you see past the credits? Yeah, the end scene where she gets is attacked still by a monster. There. Yeah. Yeah. I. I. Yeah. Because they, they do sort of. She disappears halfway through the film, and I. This movie's so bad that they literally just have a character disappear and I didn't even notice until no. they reappeared after the credits. Yeah, at the end I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I liked I just... um, Honey Pie. 
Yeah, the she there was like one scene that was or not one scene that was well acted in this film, but her scene where she looked in the guy's eye and it was full of maggots. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was decent acting. Yeah, oh, it's just like we, I th- I don't know if it's coming across here, but we are really struggling to talk about anything remotely interesting with this film because this yeah, film was not remotely trying to find good points in this film is impossible. It is just a bad film. No one should go and watch it. Don't even give it the time of day. The monsters looked all right. That's not a reason to watch the film, though. No, it's not. But I'm just saying, like, you know, costume. Yeah, the big monsters looked right. The little monster was a bit shit, shit, I thought. But the big ones were kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just wish this film hadn't relied so much on just being sexual humour and lame humour. Just Like, just uh, lean into the gore. If you're going to do this film, just lean into the gore. Don't try and be a comedy horror. I think if you're maybe, like, 13, 14 years old... And you're having a sleepover, and you want to like, I don't know, you're, you're, you're that, that age where it's cool to be desensitised to stuff. Sure, give this a go. Um, you'll be the coolest guy in the room, no doubt. But like, otherwise, if you have like two brain cells to rub together. Yeah, don't watch this film. Yes, maybe this isn't, maybe, maybe we're missing something. Yeah, if there is a deeper subplot to this film that me and Liam have completely missed, someone let us know. Yeah, because, you know, maybe this was created as, like, a response to the Iraq war. Because, you know, you have the vet character in it, and, uh, I don't know, I'm reaching. Yep. I'm really reaching. Yep. I liked the one scene right at the end where the car didn't start in the credits. Really? I just thought that was dumb. I mean, at that point, I was like, it's an attempt at humour that's slightly better than the rest of it. I think uh, we should watch number two together. Yeah? Yeah, I think we should. Should we watch it when I come down to do the New Forest bike trail? That's what I'm thinking. Okay, fine. Uh, I, I'm expecting it to not be good, but I do remember there being one bit that did make me laugh. It's going to be something really offensive that I'm just like, Liam. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. If I remember rightly. Um... Jeez, this is, a, this is a short culture swap, because it's just bad, and it's not talkable bad. It's just shit. Yeah, like I, I'm, I'm really trying to think, like, how do we discuss this in a way that at least the discussion is interesting. This movie is so devoid of interest that... I don't even think we can. No, honestly, listeners, I think us trying to drag this out any longer is going to just bore you because it will just be me and Liam going, but it's bad, though. It's just yeah. bad. It's so bad. What I have found interesting Go on. is I've looked on Letterboxd at what people are saying about it, and yeah. it's generally getting, like, three stars, three and a half, a few four stars, a couple of fives. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you... This is an interesting one. Do you would would this have been during the time when you were doing letterbox reviews? I still do letterbox reviews. No, I know, but but back then were you doing them? Oh no, I wasn't back then. No, that's what I mean. I was going to say it would be interesting if we could see what drunk Liam thought of this film. And let's hang on. Oh, I do. Yeah, and I've, <gasps> I've got shit. I've, I wrote a lot about it. Did you actually? Yeah. Oh man, I don't know if I want to read this though. Oh, can you send me the link? I, I, it's not a link. I've just got. It. So what, what happened is I, I used to use this website called Flickster that was like uh, attached to Facebook. Oh, okay. And it got really buggy, so I basically exported all of my reviews into a like a .dot text file or something. Oh, okay. So uh, I, I can read it out, but it, this could be embarrassing. I'm. T- I think you should try. If it's if it ends up just being a shit review, then we can just cut it out. But I do. I am fascinated to hear. All right, let's see. Okay, let's see. First of all, just tell me what what star rating this got. Or do do you have a star rating? I on don't it have a star rating on it for it. No. Damn. No. Okay. All right. The opening to this 2005 horror comedy quickly and effectively establishes our key players in a unique and original style. Very quickly, just I'm going to hit pause. Yeah. Quickly and effectively. Yeah. It was a 12 minute <laughs> intro. 14, I think you said earlier. Sorry, 14. Sorry, yeah. 14. Um, whenever we are first introduced to a new character. The camera pauses and a brief bio pops onto the screen, giving a name, fun fact, and life expectancy. Yep. This eliminates the need for awkward exposition, for this scraggly group of misfits are your typical bar dwellers. It are also they? <laughs> Sorry. What? They're your typical bar dwellers. Apparently that's what, what bars are you going to? What bars were you going to in two thousand and five? Mm, not good ones. Well this was no. in two thousand and eight ish when I think I saw this. Two thousand eight, okay, two thousand and nine. Okay. But yeah. It also promises a horrifying death for one unlucky character in the next 70 minutes. Uh, there's a brief but humorous cameo from Jason Mewes too, playing himself. It's your usual bar setting, with the regular clientele drowning their sorrows and spoiling for a fight until the arrival of Hero bearing a decapitated monster head 
with the revelation that there are more monsters and they're on their way. This yep. mismatched group are going to have to put their differences aside and learn to work together if they hope to make it through the night in one piece. Feast is a fun gore-filled horror romp, <laughs> which keeps its tongue firmly in its cheek. It pays an obvious homage to under siege horror films, recalling memories of Night of the Living Dead and, more recently, the pub climax from Shaun of the Dead. Jeez, whoa, dude, what a fucking bold step you took back then. <laughs> you compared this film to Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. And then Shaun of the Dead. You've yeah. got, you had some problems back then. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think I thought that I was going to be a real film critic. Oh, okay. Oh, this is like back in back in the day. Yeah. Got you. Uh, the events play out blisteringly fast, with the characters quickly thrown into a hellish scenario and a few swift dispatches to get the messy action rolling. There's enough deftly handled characterization. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. What film did you watch? <laughs> Not this one. You watched Night of the Living Dead. Yeah, I rewatched that. I wish I had. Uh, okay, there's enough deftly handled characterization for unlikely heroes to soon emerge and villainous cretings deserving of a painful death. Despite the fact this does parody the horror genre, Quite effectively, it's careful to never become too predictable. It also never takes itself seriously, featuring monster sex and dismembered monster members. Oh, very good. You were so funny back then. Yeah. Uh, some may find these gross-out diversions disgusting and unwelcome, while yep. others will embrace the randy monster madness. Yeah, okay, I, I know what era Liam we're dealing with. <laughs> this is this is horny Liam. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Feast is not without its flaws. All too often it finds itself subjected to frantic, fast-paced editing, which gives certain events a distinct lack of clarity. There's little need for such confusion, and while director John Gulliger employs this as a means of keeping the full monstrous being relatively well hidden until the blood-soaked climax, it is an unfortunate distraction that could have been avoided. God, that sentence runs on, doesn't it? Uh, The lighting also leaves much to be desired, with its often difficult... No, hang on. The lighting also leaves much to, de- to be desired, and it's often difficult to make out exactly what is happening on screen due to an all encompassing. How do you say that word? All encompassing? Encompassing. Encompassing, that's it. The thing is, right, when I write down words, yeah. I know what I mean, but I because they're words that I've, I've seen written, but I never say out loud, I'm then like, yes. how do I pronounce it? It's, uh, I used to have that with Chimera. Yeah. I used to pronounce that Chimera because I'd only ever read it. I still struggle with key. Like, uh, like gun wolf keys. Oh yeah, because it's quay. Yeah, yeah. And like quiche. That's another one that does quiche. my nut in. Quiche. It's a quiche. Anyway, okay. So the lighting also leaves much to be desired, uh, and it's often difficult to make out exactly what's happening on screen due to an all-encompassing darkness. The acting throughout is distinctly average, but believable mm. enough. Oh. Mm. <laughs> and the story does contain a few pleasant surprises. The monsters themselves are well designed and suitably grotesque looking, and That's when they're fair. not busy humping or raping. They prove to be quite formidable foes. Slight point there. I think even when they're raping, they're still quite formidable. Yeah, I don't think they were weak when they were <laughs> doing horrible sex acts. No. Uh, a sense of fun pervades the screen. And without mm. this, Feast would be a tired gore fest in the same vein as Hatchet. Thankfully, due to a brisk pace and good running time, this monster movie never outstays its welcome. An open ending and unanswered questions pave the way for a sequel, which has potential to build on this solid start. <laughs> While not quite a fearsome feast, this tasty snack should keep horror films pleasantly satiated. Oh dear, Liam. So, times have changed. Yep, definitely. Tastes have changed. (laughs) Yes, clearly. Fuck me. Jeez. Yeah, that that, that was... So, I think, if you you think, that's what I thought of it ten years ago, so that's what I was expecting still. And I think if I'd have got a movie that matched that review, I wouldn't have been so disappointed, but this movie does not match that review. No, yeah, you were clearly very, very drunk. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's maybe, a beautiful, beautiful thing, Liam. Maybe I should have watched it again drunk. Maybe we'll leave it another ten years, get you really drunk, re-watch it, and that's see which review you agree with. That sounds like a bad idea. Um, Out of five? Oh, one. I, I, I'm, I'm debating whether to push it out to 1.5, but I'm really struggling to justify why I would do that. Yeah. So I, I think I have to agree with the one. Yeah, because I don't like giving things one. No, but... I honestly don't think this film has earned anything higher. Yeah, like, the monsters look cool, 
and, yeah, but, and, and I, I liked a couple of the characters and there was a couple of bits that were surprising is that enough for a one point like, yeah I'm, I'm I, gonna I, go I'm, do, I'm gonna do it 1.5 I done don't it. know if it is though no I've done it 1.5 out of 5 alright fine I mean it's still not great there you go listeners Liam loved this film that, like, would Liam recommend this film no would you recommend it to someone who was 13 and <laughs> trying to impress their friends yeah there you go yeah if, if you want to show your friends what a total twat you are Feast is yeah. a great movie for if that. You're, if you're one of those twatty kids that thinks that all a good film needs is gore and sex jokes, watch Feast. Am I correct in thinking that this doesn't even have boobs in it? Uh, no, I don't think there I don't think there was any nudity, no. No. Well, there was a monster cock, but... Yeah, but I don't think that counts. Well, I'm going to count it. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, like... and it, This seems like the sort of movie that would have, like, boobs. Yeah, this is sort of... Yeah, this is kind of like a weird holdover from... That sort of time period where they were doing like horror, nudity, comedy, whatever films. Yeah, and this has sort of kept two of those facets and, and just failed to do them. The boobs. Yeah, I think it might have got a two if it had some boobs in it. Well, that's a bad reason to give it half a star, but yeah, I, I kind of I'm sorry for recommending Feast. Like, especially like, I mean, none of our listeners play along with us, but if any of our listeners had have gone out to watch it, oh god, it, yeah, if anyone did watch this, sorry. we need to save Amanda. I mean, Amanda Bonnie is a horror, so she, it's all good. That's true. So she, she might have watched that like short that we were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds delightful. I wish it we'd does. watch that I instead. I wish we'd watch that. Um, oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Honestly, no one go watch this. No. And uh, it's also good like evidence that, like you know, while Liam is pretty great, he's not infallible. I'm glad that you've accepted that. You know, we've all allowed a mistake. You're making me watch The Feast too. Well, you know... <laughs> Uh, what are we doing next time, Liam? We are doing... God, a... whatever it is, we should have picked something... We could have picked anything here. Whatever it is is going to get raving reviews because it's not Feast. Yeah, that's that's true. But what we're doing is uh, a, a, a TV show that's on Netflix that was made by Channel 4. Yep. It's called The End of the Fucking World, but the fuck is, like, starred out. It's F, star, 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 I-N-G. Yeah. So how do I say that? Fucking... Fucking. I have umbrage to, to raise. Do you? Yeah. With with me? Yeah. Oh, what have I done? You censored me. <laughs> I thought it was funnier. I listened back. <laughs> and within like the first minute I was censored. <laughs> I love it. Um but yeah, we're doing end of the fucking world. It's eight episodes, so like twenty minutes Obviously. each. Um it's gonna be better than Feast, isn't it? Hopefully. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. Oh, God. I think it's like a 92% match to me on Netflix, so... Out of all of the things we've done, I'm thinking Feast maybe has been my least favourite so far, maybe. Yeah, this I I think I agree with you. I think this might be the lowest thing we've done on the show. Blue is the warmest colour was pretty pretty difficult. But at least that one was like... It was we so didn't long. like it. It was but, so long. But we could also see that there was like... I think, you know, we were like, I can see why people would like this. Yeah. But we don't. This film, I can't see normal people liking. No, I'm trying to think, like, has there been anything else? I- I'm sure there's been something else that was real bad. I mean, if my if my anime suggestions aren't topping that list, I'm happy. Mm, yeah, possibly uh, when I did had to do that bloody uh, Attack on Titan. Oh, that was finished it, yeah. No. Remember when you promised me you'd finish it? Yeah, remember when you said you'd finish American Psycho? I am. Well, I'm, I've done like 12 Go on, episodes. try and say the lie. You watched one episode. I've done 12 episodes of Attack on Titan in total so far. Whatever. Which is a lot. Ugh, Liam. Yeah. Our wonderful fans, they want to contact us and say, hey, um, I watched The Feast because I always play along at home and I just, I need to shout at you. Yeah. How can they do that? You can tweet us at Nerd on Nerd. Very good. Facebook us. Facebook.com slash Nerd on Nerd pod. Yep. They could email us, nerdonnerdpod at gmail.com. They could leave a comment on an old YouTube video for some reason. YouTube, <laughs> search Nerd on Nerd. Please can someone go and up. comment on one of the YouTube videos and say, I fucking hate Feast. Uh, if you just type Nerd on Nerd, we don't come up. No, don't um, be silly. If you type it as, as three words, if you type it as one word, we do come up. Oh, do we? We do. Oh, cool. So type Nerd on Nerd, all one word, guess what? We're there, waiting wow. for you. We're waiting for you. And you can go and listen to episodes that we recorded like two years ago. So it's like a fun... No, I, I've actually been quite enjoying going back and listening to what, what, what we were up to like two years ago. Yes, but it, that's you. 
You're weird. We all just heard your review of Feast. That was ten years. <laughs> oh, right, fine. Um, yeah. So, bye. Just uh, well, super quickly. Just real quick before we go. I don't want to do this. Some, there, right. there is just there is just one thing we need to talk about, listeners. Yeah. Liam, the last time I spoke to you, the DVD tally was one thousand and ninety-eight. Yeah. You had a lot of reviews this week. I've got a confession to make. Go on. Uh, you were like, um. When we were trying to decide what to do this week, you were like, can we do something on Netflix? And in, in the back of my head, I was like, I know I've definitely seen Feast on Netflix, but also it's one of my DVDs, and that's going to help me get my, my list down by one. I fucking knew it. Not that it was in your DVD pile, but I knew you hadn't fucking checked on Netflix, because it's not on Netflix. <laughs> it's not, but it was, because I did yeah, check, ooh, and it, sure. it did... It, I don't know when it got taken off, but it did. Yeah, um, convenient. Yeah, yeah but, so we, you've definitely knocked one off. Yeah, so what was the number before? 1,098. Cool. It's gone down. What is, has it? Yeah. Because I think you, you were worried, weren't you? There was like a big batch coming in. Uh, No, 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 no. I, I haven't been buying anything. Oh, okay. But I also haven't been watching anything, so it's down to 1,097. Okay, so it's literally just feast. <laughs> yeah. Very good, Liam. The, the problem is, like, this, this is the first movie I've watched at home since coming back from Canada. <laughs> Oh, what a bad choice. Yeah, I, I'm i just so uninspired to just sit and watch a movie. Like, I don't mind watching Parenthood because I love it and I wish I was a braver man. But, I don't know, I'm really bored with everything. And the thought of just watching a movie doesn't fill me with a lot of joy. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I'm not sure either. Fair enough. Uh, I'm sure I'll get back into my movies at some point. And, I, I, you know, I'm still going to cinema a lot, but it's not... It's not being in Canada, is it? It isn't. Any final thoughts, Liam? Uh, don't me. Bye. Bye. You're going to censor that, aren't you? <laughs>